Okay, uh, so for the linguistic processing of the data, um, the most important thing to know is that we worked on unifying these linguistic annotations that we provide with the corpus. So we decided to use uh, the morphosyntactic description, dependency parsing of universal dependencies, same name, identity recognition um, categories, etc. But let me start first with just saying I don't know how many of you in the audience are uh, well acquainted with natural language processing and computational linguistics. So the, how we do the automatic uh, processing of linguistic contents is via machine learning. This will be important later on when we will look at some uh, limitations of this processing. And the levels of linguistic processing that we did for all the four corpora are tokenization and sentence splitting, lemmatization, morphosyntactic annotation, dependency parsing, and named entity recognition. As, as I said at the beginning, these were all done in a uniform way, meaning that they could be compared across corpora, which is also an important angle of the resource that we are giving. I have prepared some exports or some examples of this linguistic annotation because it might be that not everybody is well acquainted with this. So from the Croatian corpus, the first sentence uh, translated uh, automatically, translated actually says the dist distinguished ladies and gentlemen in accordance with article four, paragraph two of the rules of procedure of the Croatian parliament. If this Croatian text is processed, um, this is its output. So everything we do is actually, so first of all, we split the text into different tokens. Next, for each token, we do a series of uh, labeling. So first of all, we do the limitization process, which means that we map each word to its uh, base form. This is especially important for searching through such uh, resources, especially for the Slavic languages that are part of this resource. As we know, Slavic is a highly inflected language, so this is a very important step. The next column that I showcase here is the part of speech tagging. Uh, um, information for which we use universal part of speech together with features that I don't show here for simplicity. Uh, the two next columns are results of syntactic parsing that I will show in the next slide. And the final column is the named entity recognition column where you see that mm, uh, the only named entity we have in this part of the corpus is Hrvatskog Sabora. Which is, which is Croatian parliament translating to English and which was correctly identified as being an organization. For the syntactic uh, dependency parsing, as I said before, we use the universal dependencies formalism. So this is a great project, especially because it allows us to describe on the syntactic levels all the four languages in a very similar way. So if we wanted to translate this syntactic parse, this is distinguished ladies and gentlemen in accordance to article four, et cetera. So we get a syntactic structure of the whole sentence. So after showing these examples, a uh, very important, uh, oh, sorry, before that, I will just give a few technical details on how we did the processing just for the technically more savvy people. So we processed the South Slavic uh, languages, Bulgarian, Croatian, and Slovenian with one pipeline that we have developed inside the Cluster Knowledge Center, which focuses in South Slavic languages. Um, so this is actually a spin-off of the Stanford Stanza tool, but we have improved the results obtained with Stanza by uh, extending the training data. So given that all these tools are based on machine learning, the tools are as good as the data are that uh, these tools are trained on. So given that Stanza only uses tree banks for training, we extended uh, this training data to additional data, which is not uh, parsed, but has still very useful information. And we also included inflectional lexicons that are highly useful for Slavic languages. And on, in the end, we added an identity recognition to the tool. Uh, for some numbers, just to have an idea of how good these annotations are. So uh, morphosyntax uh, resolves roughly correctly 97 out of 100 words. So we have three words 
incorrectly classified or annotated uh, 100 words. For lemmatization, this number is 99, so almost everything is correct. Dependency syntax is the least accurate annotation uh, layer with 93% of accuracy roughly, and then entities are similar to the other lay, uh, layers with 98%. And this is all based on neural models, but the older, uh, the older, uh, uh, um, technology by LSTM and similar. For Polish, uh, the situation is very similar. Different tools are used all for this, uh, for each of these layers, but the accuracies of these tools are very similar to the ones that we have used for such Slavic languages. Speaking about linguistic annotation and mentioning that it is not all correct, very important, especially for people who haven't used automatically annotated corpora before. It is very important to know that there are very uh, there are some uh, limitations that one has to take into account while using such automatically processed uh, corpora. So as I said already, these annotations are as good as the data that the tools were trained on together with some limitation on the tools themselves. So especially for people who are fluent in Croatian, um, looking at the previous uh, example, you might have men uh, noticed two uh, mistakes in the example. First of all, gospod, so gentleman, was wrongly uh, lemmatized to gospod, while the correct lemma is gospoda. This is just because this is actually an archaism uh, and it's very irregular and is was not covered uh, in our training data. So the machines cannot know, especially for archaic forms that are highly regular, how they should look like. Uh, the second mistake that you have may, might have noticed is in accordance to um, Article 4, uh, Paragraph 2. So Paragraph 2 was not parsed correctly. So the parser assumed that there was a second uh, rule of, of conduct of the Croatian uh, parliament, while it wasn't the second um, rule of conduct, but the second um, second paragraph. So the, this was a mistake on the level of uh, morphous of uh, dependency parsing. So one has to uh, be very cautious while using the such automatically processed corpora that you cannot trust the annotations completely. But on the other hand, you also cannot, what I sometimes hear from linguists, that this is just incorrect, that this resource is not good and should not be used. Still, uh, the majority of the annotations are good. So I think this can be exploited with the proper methodology that takes into account the possibility of error. And to wrap up my part, uh, so there are multiple ways forward regarding the linguistic annotation. The most obvious one is, and that we, I hope, will take at some point under consideration, is extending slightly our training data for this project. Because with just a few examples from the very, uh, the, the high specificities of this uh, corpus, for instance, the greetings or the specific uh, a syntactic structure that we have um, uh, that we could have observed in the examples, the machines or the algorithms would catch very quickly on these, and uh, the annotations would just be much more accurate. Next, give, uh, we do name entity recognition, but this doesn't do anything but uh, label a specific sequence of tokens as being a specific type of named entity but we don't know which named entity this correctly is. So if we want to extend entity recognition, the most obvious step would be something called named entity linking, where each uh, mention of the Croatian parliament, which can be, of course, uh, on the surface level, uh, quite different. It can be Sabor, Hrvatskog Sabora, Hrvatskome Saboru, etc. or Ovom Visokom Domu. Uh, so um, the name entity linking should actually each of these mentions link to uh, ID which refers to the Croatian parliament. This allows uh, for downstream processing that really looks up all the mentions of a specific entity and not specific linguistic uh, uh, realizations of a specific entity. Uh, another thing that might be added is coreference resolution. So coreference resolution mostly deals with um, 
uh, resolving issues of, uh, like uh, pronouns. So them, if them is mentioned somewhere in the text, it might be that uh, the speaker refers to the opposition or him to a specific speaker, etc. Uh, another layer that could be added is sentiment or emotion analysis. So these are very um, active areas of research right now. And given that there is surely also emotion shared among the uh, parliament speakers. I think this would be also a very interesting uh, layer of annotation that could be exploited in different downstream uh, research uh, agendas. And finally, if we wanted to go beyond text, uh, there is also for most of the parliamentary proceedings, there is audio and video available. And nowadays with deep learning, we have so many possibilities here. One would be for audio recordings to extract vocal features that might be useful for a series of research, the researchers. And regarding video recordings, probably the most interesting one would be extracting gestures. So those gestures that people do while speaking or the mimics uh, they express with their face. So, so much uh, from my side.